In this program, we have an array of voices from a whale song to the flute of a fawn, from liturgy to mythology. Pierre Boulez once said that modern music started with Debussy's Prelude to an Afternoon of a Fawn. And indeed, this is one of the most uh, groundbreaking works in terms of harmony and in terms of feeling. Uh, and yet it wasn't the kind of revolution that had people riding in the streets after Stravinsky's uh, Rite of Spring, but rather more velvet revolution. The harmony seduced rather than confront you. And it's still one of the most ravishing pieces in music. The inspiration for Debussy's work was a poem by Stéphane Mallarmé, one of the great poets of the French Symbolist movement. Ravel was also inspired by Mallarmé to write the other French work on this program, Trois Poèmes de Stéphane Mallarmé, Three Poems by Stéphane Mallarmé. Debussy was furious when he learned that Ravel had the rights to these poems before he did, and later on set two of the poems himself. Ravel's mini-song cycle is one of my favorite song cycles. It's very short, but it's a masterpiece of color and mood. It's very rarely heard because of the unusual instrumentation, but I'm thrilled to be able to program it on this concert. Voice was also the inspiration for another piece on this program, not the voice of a poet or a human or a fawn, but rather the voice of a whale. George Crumb heard a recording of the humpback whale and was inspired to write this incredibly evocative piece. Crumb writes for amplified flute, amplified piano, and amplified cello. I asked them to wear masks to remove the human element and bathe the stage in cool blue light to evoke the depths of the sea. I first remember encountering George Crumb's Vox Balané ooh, when I was like eight years old. I saw a performance of the piece when I was eight years old in Chicago and I'd never heard anything like it. I'd never heard a flautist sing and play at the same time. I think it was probably my first time seeing a pianist play inside the instrument. And now returning to the piece and playing it for the first time, I find myself reflecting on how the work is almost like a religious piece about nature sort of a deification of nature, an attempt at uh, deifying nature through like humanly interpreting these sounds. It's a piece that gives us a whole new set of tools with which to think about the world, um, to think about our relationship to our environments, and, uh, and also our relationship to beautiful music. It's an incredible piece. The sense of the mysterious and the mystical continues with the last piece of this program, Rachmaninoff's incredible piano and cello sonata. The sounds of bells and choirs of the Russian Orthodox Church fill this piece, as well as the passion that, of course, Rachmaninoff brings to every piece that he writes. Every cellist is very grateful that there's something, something really wonderful that he wrote for the cello. Of course, the I mean, the, the most amazing material, of course, is in the piano part, um, and it's uh, and it's just nice to be able to play these gorgeous melodies on top of these these cascades of this amazing piano writing, and um, to have the kind of flexibility, the pushing and pulling, and the you know this outpouring of emotion that yet has such a strong structure. It's a delight to play, I have to say. Alisa Wallerstein and myself have played this piece many times and have even recorded it, and it's one of our personal favorite pieces. We'd love to share it with you.